Hey, this is a tour of the Unity 3D code for my finished commercial game on Google Play. In this video, we'll look at how I manage my resources and sprites. And I noticed that most programming tutorials show off incomplete or toy projects, so I thought this might be useful to other developers. And the code you see in this video is free and open source with an MIT license. If you don't know Chesscraft, before watching this video, I recommend you watch the one minute trailer so you can connect the code to the game, but whatever. Uh, links are in the video description. So in the Chesscraft game, there's a lot of different graphics you might see and pop-ups with sprites. And I might go to the menu and I might see all the different pieces. And I wanna kinda of do this in a quick way so the sprites don't aren't loaded and unloaded all the time, that it's really only loaded once if it needs to be loaded. And that's where Resource Manager comes in on the left here. So if we click Resource Manager on the left, now on the right, you can see all of these collapsible areas where you can put in connections to the Unity Inspector. And this is a nice way of sorting this out. Now the way you do this, let's say uh, Vertical Gates, Inside Resource Manager, we're gonna see vertical gates right here. And the type of class that this is, is an adventure map gate. And this is at the bottom right here of Resource Manager. It's inside Resource Manager because I don't really wanna ever see this outside of Resource Manager. If I type adventure, I don't want to see this really pop up in my code. It's really just for here, and it's really just to contain these sprites. And note how there's vertical gates and horizontal gates, but they have the same class type. So that shows up here on the right as these two things we can fill out. Now something else is all of these managers on the left, including resource manager. I've made them all singletons. And this is a class that I've written called Singleton. And so here's the code for Singleton. It's pretty simple. All it really does is it exposes this value instance. And so anywhere in my code, I can type resource manager dot instance. And you can see the search results for resource manager dot instance is all over the place. Now I wouldn't want to do a find component 20 different times and then cache the results in each of these classes. That would be really annoying and sometimes I might use it at first but then remove it and now I have a leftover unused uh, variable. So this way anywhere I want in the entire project I can type resource manager dot instance dot whatever and it can easily access that without crashing without getting a null error. So that's a really useful thing to do in Unity. So all resource managers, and in fact, in my project, all managers are singletons, but all singletons are mono behavior with setup. And this is another class that I made that I use all over the place. And it looks like this. So mono behavior with setup is a mono behavior, the standard Unity 3D kind of object but it also has this setup code, which is really nice. So all this does is it runs setup if it has not run yet. And now I know it's safe that I can actually run setup if setup has not run anywhere in the code. So any class can run that on any class and it's always safe and it kind of guarantees a setup. So now I don't have to worry about unity start or awake or race conditions. You know, sometimes you might put a bunch of stuff in start and it loads resources and now they're not null, it's fine. But then later you might shuffle around the order of your managers or you might delete one or merge a couple. And now suddenly when you press play, everything breaks because the starts are all happening at different times. And now you've got to do all kinds of weird acrobatics in your code. Now instead what I do is I, whenever I run into those problems, I just spam this down all over the place. So if ever I'm in doubt or I want to guarantee that something is set up, so if I ever re rebuild the board piece list in Board Edit Manager, let's just run my setup if it's not run yet. And there's no overhead in doing this. It's just checking and then it'll do it. 
So I really place this all over the place. And you could do a lot of uh, accessor methods like get and set. If null, then get it or set it up. But I found that was a lot of work. And especially when I'm constantly adding and removing little user interface elements and things, it became really tedious. So I thought this was a good design pattern too. And when you actually use it, it just looks like this. Protected override void setup. This setup will run on start. Or other things can make it run sooner if you run setup if uh, setup if setup has not run. Now when you're playing, if you look at the top left of the game, there's a color for the computer. This one's red. And I use that red color for a lot of different places in the UI. And that's why it's in Resources Manager as well. The color is here. So I'm using the don't repeat yourself principle. So if you find yourself saying the color red, the color red, the color red in five different places, put it in one place. Now Unity has a few tricks for managing resources and sprites. So in my assets folder, there's resources. This is a special folder that Unity actually pays attention to. Now, anything you put in here actually has to be included in the project. If I put a, you know, one gigabyte file in my resources folder, it's going to be included in my project, even if nothing ever uses it. However, for sprites, asset sprites, this is a little smarter. And I think I have some leftovers in here I'm not using. So you would think my pieces would go in here, but they don't. I actually put them in resources, pieces. And the reason I do this is so it's really easy to add and remove pieces. So my code in Resource Manager will actually read all of the contents of this and load up and find to find all the pieces. So this load piece sprites method will happen during setup. And this is going to load all the sprites in the pieces folder, in the uh, resources slash pieces folder. It'll go through all those sprites and it's gonna build this useful dictionary of pairs because you always need a white and a black in chess for that to make sense. And it gives a warning if something goes wrong or if it can't find the opposite color. Maybe I named a file wrong. So this made it really easy to add and remove sprites as I was testing. Now the reason I did 01 classic and 02, 03, 04 is so that it would just naturally sort these as it goes through them. So if I were to make a new piece, you know, we start with the classic, now we're in the medieval pieces, now we're in the nature pieces. So that was just an easier way to make that happen. It uses the file name and the path to sort and to index all of these sprites. You can imagine how annoying that would be if I did that in Resource Manager on the right here, I would have, you know, 80 different sprites to click and drag each one, and then one would be missing, and I have to fix that, and it would just be such a burden. So on the left, I've selected all the user interface managers, and they will actually all use Resource Manager instead of caching and doing their own lookups for sprites. So for example, the Help Manager will happen when you identify a piece or a tile. And this is gonna pop up here and you can see it's using Resource Manager to actually look up the tile sprite and all the different items. So that's resource manager.instance and this is inside help manager. And consider too that the arguments here are, you know, get a tile sprite or get a piece sprite. And I say, is white true, false? Whoever's using Resource Manager doesn't care that it's made up of an array of eight different things and it's fetching item number six. It really just cares that it is white. Finally, on certain holidays, I have a sprite override. So these are the Christmas pieces. And this is done with the date manager. So inside resource manager, when I say get sprite from piece label, so this might say pawn and then true. This is going to return a sprite. And it usually does its uh, sprite pair lookup that it already built, this uh, dictionary that it already built. Except sometimes we're going to check date manager, get override sprite. 
So this is just going to do the same kind of lookup, but sometimes if the date is a match, it'll return that instead. So I hope this video was useful to you. Uh, if you want a copy of a specific code file, then I can share that with you on an MIT license, just ask. And uh, my sprites are also released Creative Commons, so you can use them in your projects, even commercially. That's in the, a link is in the video description. And uh, just comment uh, if you want to request a next video idea to show how I did something specific here. And of course, uh, please, you know, install the game and rate it. Um, I love this game. It's super fun. I play it all the time, and I'm really happy to show it to you guys. So thanks for watching.